If you have a hamster or a hedgehog or a sugar glider or a guinea pig, you might want one of these. It's called a snuggle sack and they are reversible fleece sacks that your animal can sleep in and snuggle in your lap in and feel secure in. This is Tiny Bun. Her name is Lilo. She's a Polish rabbit, so she's only about two and a half-ish pounds. And she, as you can see, loves to hide herself in these. She's my shy -er of my two rabbits. This is actually my best-selling product on my Etsy page. So maybe this is a bad business decision. But I'm going to teach you how to make one of these snuggle snacks that's reversible. It has no exposed seams for tiny animal nails to get stuck in. And you can make it in lots of different sizes. I'm going to give you three sizes that I make it in and you can make it even large enough to fit a larger rabbit or animal. Hi, I'm Nikita and welcome to my channel where this is what I do. I drink and I sew things. I'm gonna go put Tiny Bun away real quick and then I'm gonna show you how to make them. Today I am drinking a, I don't know what to call it, like an alcoholic apple cider. <laughs> My husband makes these, they're so good. It's like Christmas in a cup and it just like warms you up. So what you do is you take unfiltered apple cider and you put it in a pot with cloves, full cloves, and you boil it. And then you strain it into a mug so it takes all the cloves out and you add a shot of spiced rum and a cinnamon stick for garnish. And it's like the most delicious thing ever, just trust me. Okay, now let's make a snackle sack. You're going to need fleece. I like to use two different prints so that it can be reversible, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You're going to want a rotary cutter or fabric scissors, but a rotary cutter makes the edges a lot cleaner. And to finish it, we're gonna use a hand needle and thread. You'll also want a measuring implement of some kind. Because I make so many of these, I've actually made templates. So I'll show you that right now. This is my small size. It measures nine and a half inches tall by seven inches wide. And we'll use a quarter inch seam allowance ish. You can use a half inch seam allowance if you want it. It's easier to sew fleece with a half inch seam allowance. But if you use a quarter inch seam allowance, this finishes up being a nine by six and a half inch snuggle sack, which when unfolded looks about like this. And then when it's folded down, it looks like this. So this would be for a really small animal, like a small hamster or a sugar glider. The medium measures 11 inches by nine and a half inches. So it ends up being about 10 and a half by nine inches. This is probably my most popular size. In my Etsy listing, if you go check that out in the description, my friend's hedgehog is modeling this in the photos and he is modeling a medium. It gives him plenty of room to like move around and burrow in. The large is 12 and a half by 11 inches, which ends up making about a 12 inch by 10 and a half inch snuggle sack. So this would be for a small rabbit or something similar. If you want to make your own size, because maybe you want to make one for like your Flemish giant rabbit or something, then you will make a template or measure out your sack and you're going to add a half inch to each measurement because we're using a quarter inch seam allowance. So let's say that you wanted to make one that is 20 inches by 15 inches. You would make 20 and a half by 15 and a half. For this video, I'm going to make a medium. Start by taking one of your fabrics and folding it in half. We're gonna cut two pieces at the same time. Now I'm gonna lay on my template here and I'm gonna cut it out. If you're not using a template, then you would just use a quilting ruler or some sort of measuring tape to measure. Now that I have my two pieces of my one fabric cut, I'm going to set it aside. Now I'm going to take my other fabric and fold it in half, and then I'm going to cut out two pieces of this as well. Now I have four pieces of fleece, and we're going to go and sew these. I don't usually use pins when I'm dealing with fleece because the fabric likes to stick together. So you can really just line it up and run it through your sewing machine. You can also though put pins around the edges or clips. What we're going to do is we're going to sew, starting at the top of one of the long edges, we're gonna sew down, we're gonna put our needle down and pivot at the corner, 
sew a straight line, needle down and pivot, sew a straight line. So we're gonna leave one of the short sides unsewn. So let's go do that. make sure I'm not neglecting my drink. Oh, so good. Okay, so now that I've got these done, what I like to do is I like to take my fabric scissors and then I like to clip the corners, being careful not to actually clip the seam. And if I've chosen to use a half inch seam allowance, which I do sometimes, um, I like to trim up the edge so that there's hardly any fabric on the outside of the seam. Now that these are trimmed up, take one of the parts that you've sewn and turn it right side out. Use your fingers to push out the corners. Now we're going to place the one that's right side out inside of the one that's inside out. And I like to use my pointer finger to push the inside corners into these corners so that they match up. I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm going to make sure that this seam is lined up and then that this seam is lined up so that when we sew it, they actually meet and look the same. Now, again, you can pin this, but because it sticks together so well, I'm just going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew it. What I like to do is I start a little ways away from this seam line, and then we're gonna sew all the way around and we're going to leave about a three inch gap so that we can turn the bags right side out. As I sew, I periodically will stop, make sure that my needle is down, and then I'll adjust my fabric to make sure that these two parts of the bag are lined up. So either pin it, make sure that your bags are lined up at the top and at the side seams, and let's go sew it using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I've actually removed the arm of my sewing machine so that I can slip the bag around it. Oh, my drink is in the way. Make sure you keep that by your sewing machine. Then I'm just going to slip my bag around my arm. And I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance to sew all the way around. When I get to this seam here, I will lift my presser foot and then help it go under and then put it back down because otherwise the seam will kind of roll outward and then I keep going. Now I'm making sure to leave a couple of inches and make sure you backstitch because if you don't, when we go to turn the bag right side out, you'll rip your stitches open. We are going to turn our bag right side out. What I like to do is put my hand inside of the bag and I use my fingers to push up the inside fabric through this hole. So I'm gonna pull out the black fabric first. And then I use my other hand on the outside to push the outer fabric through. And as you keep pulling, you can use your thumbs to push the rest of it through the hole. And then ta-da, now you have this big long tube. From the outside, I like to use my fingers to roll the corners and roll the seams outward. It just helps them lay extra nice. Okay, now we're almost to the last step, almost there. Ooh, don't forget your drink. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna take this top bag right here. I'm gonna use my hands to push it inside. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to push the, each corner into the corners of the outer bag to match. And then at the top, sometimes it does this. So I roll the bag down like that. Okay, and now here is your snuggle sack, which you can roll downward or up. The only thing is we have to close this gap right here. Now you can top stitch this if you want, that is certainly much easier. However, if you do top stitch, there is that risk that if you leave the bag like this or if your animal is playing or sleeping in it, that they could get a tiny nail stuck in that and either pull a thread or pull their nail out and we don't want that. So I'm going to use an invisible stitch, which is also called a ladder stitch. 
and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. To do an invisible stitch, you're going to need thread. I like to use a matching thread because then it's extra invisible. You're gonna need a hand sewing needle and you're gonna need scissors or snips of some kind. And you're also gonna need your drink. Don't forget this, it's the most important. You're not gonna need a ton of thread. So I'm gonna pull off like, I don't know, foot and a half or so, just to give me lots of extra. Then I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to pull the thread down until it meets the other end. Then I'm just going to tie a knot in my thread and I'm going to snip off the excess. Now to do the invisible seam, you're going to want to make sure that your two ends are folded under like this so that they're matching. Now because I'm right-handed, I am going to hold this with my left hand and I'm gonna start on the right side. Okay, I'm gonna show you the invisible stitch on a different one, a custom one I am making um, because I lost the footage for the other one. Also, Tiny Squish is here with me. All right, now to start this, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to insert the needle onto the right. So I'm gonna go through the hole. Hi, sweetie. And up into the seam line, but I'm going to go right where the two fabrics meet. Pull it up from the inside, so now your knot is on the inside. Now I'm going to hold it with my left hand while I sew with my right. So I'm going to pick up on the farther fabric just a tiny bit of fabric like this so that my needle goes through a tiny bit of the fabric. Then I'm going to pull it. Then directly across from where that thread stops, hi sweetie, I'm going to start the, on the other side and take a tiny bit of fabric. So then my thread makes a straight line, but when you pull it tight, it becomes invisible. So then I'm going to go again on the other side, straight across from where I ended, and pull it tight. And I'm going to keep repeating this all the way down. And now I've reached the end. I usually go just a little bit past the opening. And I also like to pull my fabric just a little bit to prevent that puckering. So now that I'm at the end, I'm gonna go to the middle of my seam. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of fabric, just a teeny tiny bit make a loop. I'm going to pass my needle through the loop so that it makes a knot and this knot will be right on your seam line. So let's double knot it by doing that again and then clip off your thread. Now you have this little knot that sticks out and what I like to do is take my needle and I push it with the knot into the middle of the fabric between the two seam lines. So here's my invisible seam, and to finish it off, I'm just fold this back to make my white, nice little snuggle sack. Tiny Squish and I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, we would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe, and then stick around so that you can drink along and sew along with me on my next video. Thanks for watching. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye.